Well, we do know why that happens is it, it always happens that around week six into a grow, you'll get your spike of THC, then you begin your rinse and, and the THC level starts to drop three to five points quite often. But the point from this slide is that after day 26, your, all your THC is pretty well produced and we'll say the same throughout the rest of the cycle. And what I like about this many one is it's got this herring in it. It's filter feeding herring. And I mean, that's plankton, right? Which is nutrient from, from the oceans. And then they, these, these fish filter feed the plankton, and they take the fish and hydrolyze them with an enzyme and put them into the mix. It's a fish fertilizer. Is that the mehedin? The mehedin? That Atlantic area? Yeah. 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 <coughs> and now I want to read a little bit about CBD. And I just mentioned cycleweed. Because BC Bud, I've seen 10,000 samples over the years. I've run 10,000 profiles of cannabis. Time and time again, I see that high THC peak and very little CBD. And CBD is so, so important as a medical cannabinoid, it's antioxidant, anti inflammatory, anti cancer, anti seizure, anti psychotic. This not to in any way undermine the, the, the other ones before that, but antipsychotic is an extremely important property of CBD because it allows people that get paranoid taking cannabis, when they take too much THC, they get paranoid, and then they can't get the pain release that they need. If there's CBD in the mix, they can take more THC, get better pain relief, and not get the fear of paranoia that is the overdose side effect of THC. Well, so we've already shown that you can increase the THC level. Is there any activity in how to increase the CBD levels? <coughs> He's going to get to that, sir. Uh, came across some guys <coughs> called the CBD Project. I'm going to skip that. If you can see that, oh, Christ, I can't see it. Okay, it's www.projectcbd.com. The slash availability. They're talking about strains in California that they have, and they've analyzed the flower and they found that they've got seeds for a, a blueberry cross with no cheese. It's 11% CBD and 7% THC. CBD is higher than the THC. That's that's a very valuable <coughs> strain. Very, very valuable. Not because you're going to get really high from it. It's not going to work, but it's going to help with the psychosis. It's going to help with inflammation. It's going to help um, heal you. It's, it's a, a, the structure of the molecule, like I say, is mostly hydrocarbon, but it has recept receptor binding properties, but it's also a powerful antioxidant and anti inflammatory. In terms of being useful for, for cancer, it may not even work through the receptor. Um, it can pull free radical molecules away from DNA. Uh, it's, <laughs> I don't know how to talk about it enough. Um, anyway, this group in California also has other ones at 9% THC and 8% CBD. If you can get your hands on these seeds, start growing them here in BC. I'm real tired of the cycle weed. And this is, this is better medicine. This, I'm not talking recreational here. I'm talking medical cannabis, particularly for people with chronic pain and seizure disorder. Just out of curiosity, what are the availability of seeds for strains like, say, Haley's Comet? Do you have to detect the pain? There are no seeds for that strain. This oh. one here is in. Is it there some place in California that's protecting that? Uh, a vessel or something like that? Yeah. It's got a seed that they're uh, protecting, it's supposed to be higher than CBD and all that stuff. Here. Yeah, but it's just. I've heard some things about people trying to have 
the strain. No, well, they patent the strain. It's a surrogate seed. That's surrogate they're seed. They're going to be selling all the problem of the old time uh, once uh, the Prop 19 is passed. No, I don't have to. looking on the This is a sort of profile with a business with exception. Mm -hmm. That's the THC there. It's, it's around 75% THC. Look at the CBD here. It's up to around 17. And you can roughly equate that to be the percentage of CBD in this particular strain. That's friggin' enormous. It's three times the THC at least. Right? This particular strain has dropped a young girl with daily grand mal seizures, six to ten a day, down to one or two seizures when she has her period a month. Dramatic reduction in epileptic seizures <coughs> using this strain. We seesaw the seizures with the THC and the CBD. The more THC, the more she seizes, the more CBD, the less she will seize. This is the cure for epilepsy, and this is a really strange form of epilepsy called LGS. Um, Leonard Gestalt syndrome, something like that. Some pronunciation. But this is a sort of strain. I got a shirt on here, I'll show you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The guys had shown, but goddammit, I'm not a strain hunter. <laughs> because it's where the medicine is, and it's the profiles that tell us it's there, and um, it's, it's about medicine. But I call it the rubber bubble. There's a guy inside that bubble there. I got another one rubber bubble here too. This kid is drool. Mm -hmm. You can't see it. That's because the other side of the bubble is where legality is, and it remains illegal. And I say that that's drool on the kid's shirt. <laughs> and it, it will be that way until it is legalized. They're voting in California in November. It could be a big step forward. But at this time, it's <clears throat> A lot of banging around in a rubber bubble. There's, there's no funding out there for it. My reason for uh, bringing in the co-sponsors today is to do the research because uh, research costs money and if there's nothing around, it gets done. Um, but anyway, I am very pleased with this product, maybe one. That's why I got my name on it. And John has been, well, let me go a bit more on John. John is one of the bravest people I've ever met. He fell 28 feet and uh, shattered his body <coughs> seven, eight years ago. He was five years ago. When I met him, he was full of opiates, humped over, and not a happy person. Today he's here, he's got a new truck, he's got a new wife, a house, and his life is for the world. And John is one of the few people that I've been able to talk into standardizing cannabis growth. He's done it, he does a good job on it, and he likes many one. And I, I've asked him to be here today because if there are growers in the room that, that need to talk tech about uh, growing cannabis plants, I'm not the person to talk to John here. And uh, we'll leave it open for questions and answers now. I also have some samples from some people here from Medi-One, and that's offered to Green Planet Wholesale. It's like basically the company that we're working for right now. And uh, one thing I've been able to come up with with Paul is uh, with Medi-One, um, I have one part of the window. I have nothing else to use, so I can't screw it up, actually. It, it really makes growing a lot more easier. And like my wife says, that, um, I don't swear in my grow room anymore. She doesn't hear me swearing because I'm not screwing up my mixes and stuff like that. But on top of that, um, I have a video here if you can somehow play it. Uh, it's not playing on there. I can show you a two-minute video of what I'm producing using that anymore. We're getting tremendous yields. We're getting flavor and terpenoids we've never seen before. Um, and it's one part grow on bloom. Uh, Paul will be doing the testing on it and I've been doing the research growing on it for the last year. And I've been a medicinal grower for six years and I've used a lot of products and uh, I'm 
I'm staying with Medi One because A for One it's a third cheaper, and that's one thing that makes it very easy to use. Plus, I'm getting triple A quality medicine over and over, so I'm getting the same profiles over and over, so I have my same medicine, which is so important to me for my conditions, right? So the biggest thing for me is being able to control that cannabis. So when I get up in the morning, I have a daytime prep, I have a nighttime prep. Now, when I'm using different nutrients, I'm going to notice different profiles of policy. But now with many one, I'm getting that consistency with that, what do you say, a three to five percent ratio? Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And and it doesn't just come down to the nutrient. It comes down to a lot more when you're dealing with this. So you got to look at air flow. you got to look at temperature, humidity. you got to look at, at your lighting. There's so much more you get involved with it. Um, and uh, what I'm doing now is I'm a deemed by WorkSafe BC, which is my new job title, a legal medical cannabis educator slash advocate, and I work out of a store called Pacific Northwest Garden Supplies in Surrey. And in that corner, I have a medical section, I work twice a week, part-time, and I educate people on how to grow their medical cannabis properly. At the same time, I help people get their federal exemptions, or fill in paperwork, or try to educate their doctors if their conditions or the doctors don't really know what we're talking about. I have education patterns and stuff like that. I've got this all from this man here, Dr. Hornby, and uh, for the last five years we have really been trying to find out ways of controlling my pain, and one step was another step, which is uh, many one, which I will have samples for for anybody who wants one of those. John was our first successful peer-reviewed publication. I wrote a case study on John along with a couple other old Johns. My wife now? His wife was a registered nurse and another doctor, and we actually got it published. So it's uh, one of the first published studies. And, and it just doesn't come down to cannabis at that point too. It comes down to uh, amino acids, natural supplements too, which we've come to realize that natural GABAs and tyrosines and uh, I take one called uh, PS100, which is false at Syria, and there's different reasons why I'm able to control my pain today. Pharmaceutical free, I take no drugs, and I did my last arm surgery and my back surgery taking only natural cannabis uh, from home and amino acids. So, uh, things are coming far these days with natural cannabis. Guys. There go Ted's got some bottles over here. Free samples for people here who are growing. And, and one thing I want to take big attention to with the free samples is many ones is pH low, so you need a pH up with it. One thing I came to realize is five mils of many one to half a mil of pH up per liter works very well for my pH level. <coughs> so make sure you pH your, your nutrients. And that's one thing is you do need a pH up with it, but that's all you need is just a little bit of pH up. And there is a little bit of information here. You do get a sample bottle. Uh, you can grab that. And if there's any questions, please feel free to email me or to call me if you have any questions. I'll leave some business cards at the front here. And I also have some catalogs here if anybody wants anything and stuff like that. Yeah, this is the catalog. Ted will also be having some sample bottles at his yeah, might be able to get one for you. Uh, store. Okay. And, um, yeah. So so if there's any questions or anything anybody would like to ask Paul or myself, I think now would be the time oh. to do it. Um, well, yes and no. Like time is so short, we really just got like an extra minute to, to, okay. to wrap yeah. things up here and stuff. Uh, so what I'm, I'm going to do though is uh, I can bring my laptop and uh, out at 4:20 while we're setting up. It's just a two-minute yeah, video. Yeah, just a two-minute video. Uh, while we're setting up, uh, you, those that want to watch the video can sit and, and watch it with John. Um, and, and so uh, we'll, we'll have some. Of many on there. Yeah. So so there's lots of time to ask questions here on it. So thank you so much, though, guys, for coming over. It's always thank such you, a very much. pleasure to have you come oh, and to hear what what you're up to and. Um, Yay. And then uh, I guess the, uh, the next time uh, we'll be working with Paul, it's, it hope, hopefully we'll be uh, actually not here, but at UBC, January 30th, we're trying to put together a first convention on that campus. And, uh, To working with Paul over uh, on the mainland and, and, and still dragging him over here once a year uh, somehow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dragon, yeah. I bought him that spectrometer.
moved here.